Hi, everybody. So you're very welcome back. This is our weekly podcast, The Garden of Confidence. Um, This week, I have Pauline joining me. And I suppose we're going to talk about a topic that's really close to my heart. But I do, I see it more and more. And I see lots of people that I know as well kind of will discuss it. So I just thought it'd be brilliant um, to have Pauline on today to share all her wisdom with us. So the name of the podcast this week is The Courage to Prosper. Um, and, you know, I think we all have that kind of dream inside us. Um, and no matter what we're doing, whether it's we've taken a career break to be a mom or whether in the corporate world or whatever it is we are, sometimes we just have that dream inside us. Um, but then we get excited, Pauline, don't we, about it. And then we get terrified. Yeah, well, I mean, look, at First of all, let me say, Sharon, it's, it's a pleasure to actually speak to you because I know we've followed each other on Facebook for a while, so it's wonderful to be here. And hello, everybody. I'm delighted to be here. Um, certainly, we all have dreams, but many of us have our dreams perhaps parked. You know, maybe we yeah. are not encouraged as children to follow that dream. I've met many a client who perhaps was very creative, but the parents thought there's no money in art, whatever that looked like. And so they were told, get a, get a, get a proper job. And then it's only decades later that they're still actually really feeling the effects of that because they haven't fulfilled their dream. So, I mean, I'm, I come from the place where I believe we're all born for a reason. I believe that we each have a purpose. I believe that we have our own gifts and talents and our unique way of expressing those gifts and talents. And I'm here to help people ultimately to fulfill their potential and to really reach their, you know, reach their personal goals and go after those dreams. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you find holds people back the most? I mean, is it is it self-belief? Is it, you know, you get excited when you think of this dream or when you think, oh, I'd love to be doing this. And is it then a self-belief side, Pauline, that stops them taking them? Well, next steps? People don't believe that they can have it for a start. Most people don't. I mean, like there's a massive percentage of people that don't follow through on their dreams, up to about 97 percent of the population. Historically, really that right? Right? it's massive. And I'm actually on a mission. I am on one. I'm on a few missions, but I'm really on a mission. Do you mind if I share what my mission is? Oh, oh, absolutely! Yes. Hi, Trudy. So, so my, my big yeah. mission, my big mission, Sharon, is to bring women out of hiding, um, so that they can reveal their truth of who they are, their gifts, and their talents. I believe it's time to shine and share who you are with the world and be compensated for it. So I'm a coach, and I'm also a hypnotherapist, and I work with, on the success mindset for people to help them really go after what they want and to create the mindset for success. And I would just like to say, success is only 5% strategy and 95% mindset. And so many people get caught up in the fear of what people will say if they step outside of the comfort zone or they do something out of the ordinary, leave a particular career. I was in the guards when I left school and I left after eight years. Now, nobody left the guards in 1992 in Dublin. You'll probably work at my age when you realized that I was eight years in the guards in 1992 and so there was nobody leaving the guards it was a career for 30 years and to actually leave it and go to, to London and work for British Airways cabin crew they thought I was off my rocker because I said all you're going to be is a glorified air, um, waitress but of course they didn't see what I saw I saw Paris New York Bangkok Shanghai you know I saw Sydney Australia I, I, I saw South America I would serve tea and coffee all day long in order to do that so yeah. it took a certain amount of courage, okay, but but I had the vision and I also didn't allow other people to steal my dream because my mind was set for doing what I wanted to do. Now, I'm not saying I was a selfish person, but um, I was, I'm a kind person, but I was selfish in terms of my dream and I, and I, I really broke a mold in my family dynamic because it was traditionally 30 year contracts, get the pension and, you know, retire. And I used to be horrified at the very word retire. It is not in my vocabulary because when I was a young recruit in the guards wanting to save the world, um, you must remember Dempsey and Make Kid Peace were very much in vogue at the time. And I thought, that's me. I'll find my female partner and we're going to combat crime. But yeah. that didn't quite happen. I wasn't playing clothes for three years, to be fair, working with two males. It wasn't quite a Dempsey and Make Peace situation. But the point is um, that... I realized very quickly that I didn't fit in. I was like a square peg in a round hole. So I broke that mold. It took courage. It took confidence. But what was bigger than that, I had to develop the confidence and I had to, you know, kind of control the courage and bring myself to that level. The dream, I, it was what I wanted. And so this is what I teach people. Your desire comes first. 
What do you want? What is your burning desire to do, be, have in this world? Because I am here to tell you, you can have it. And you mightn't think that at the moment, but it's true. And the only reason you don't think it is that your mind is not set or programmed to believe it. That's what stops people. And what's the first step? Because you say, okay, you change from the guards. Um, and I can imagine, you know, at the time your family saying, even the guards saying to you, um, because even when I changed, not, I suppose I was always an accountant, let's say, but when I said I was leaving, set up my own business, was in a recession. And I remember at the time people being horrified and saying, Jesus, Sharon, would you not just stay with the job that's paying you well? You know, why yeah. do you have to choose now to do it? Um, and, you know, what was that first step that you were able to actually go, okay, here is how I can confidently, you know, leave the guards. This is what I can do. Was it that you really worked on yourself or was it something you had inside, Pauline? Well, actually, um, I've always had this sort of drive. I've always had a knowingness that I was going to help people. And I thought the guards would have been that. I'm certain you can help people in the guards, but I found myself wanting to help those that were more needy and they were usually on the other side of the law. So um, I would have been ridiculed a small bit saying, what the hell are you doing in this job? You should have been a social worker. And I used to take that on board and I was often a bit insulted by it at the time, because you must remember I was still in my early twenties at this stage, but I kept thinking there's, there's got to be more. And I suppose when I was standing on embassies as the security personnel and dismissed by those that lived in these wonderful ambassadors residences in Dublin four, shall we say, and I, I felt very invisible and I thought, okay. I thought there's more to me than this. That people don't even see that I have I'm offering value here, even standing here and protecting their, you know, their 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 building. Although was I really protecting it? I was there. God knows what would I have done. We're not we weren't armed. So I mean, you're there as a representation of some form of security. And I thought that's all I was. You're still putting yourself at risk. You were still yeah. putting yourself yeah, at risk for their safety. Well, what was most what was most um, I suppose alarming to me was that how few people actually saw you. You know, you just it's like as if it didn't exist. And I kept thinking, what, there's something wrong with this picture, you know? I know I have so much to give. I don't necessarily know what it is, um, but I'm, I'm prepared to find it. So I knew then I was beginning to feel, you know, out of place is probably the best word. I, I knew now that I wasn't actually doing the job that I was meant to do. And that caused a certain amount of inner turmoil because I guess I had always wanted to do the guards. My grandfather had been in the guards. My father had spent time in the guards, although he, he left it after about three years and he ended up going into the prison service. Mountjoy Prison and I was raised in Phipps were right beside the prison but the point I'm making is I it was around me and I suppose you could say my environment was conducive to going into some kind of a uniform and the extended family were nurses and maybe in the army or you know teachers and now we've doctors and all sorts of people and, and accountants and all sorts of um, professions at this stage but back then it seemed kind of very natural just to go into that because I was familiar with it and I was comfortable in those kind of environments. So yes, it took courage. Um, but what I did find, and I did find meditation in my twenties and it was a Tony Quinn um, meditation center, one of his shops actually, where at the back of the shop, they had a room and you could do meditation. And I discovered it on the beach one time when I was out um, in Rathmines and I discovered it. And so I started to go to the lunchtime meditations when I could. Then they had an evening one. It was just a drop in. Yeah. You you paid whatever you paid but I had been introduced to meditation when I was 17 actually as well um but I didn't enjoy it because I was at a need for speed I still have a bit of a need for speed you can probably tell at the speed I speak I, I'm always on a mission and I'm always there's a bit of an urgency to life I just want to get the best out of it so um back when I was 17 I was into athletics so I was into speed netball basketball and running and all that kind of thing so when I went to this meditation in the 1970s might I add it was uh, bearded men sitting with long hair, cross okay. legs, just didn't appeal. So right. I thought, get out of here fast. And so then I discovered a different type of meditation when I was in my 20s. But at this stage, I was more mature and I realized that things were not going my way. I felt stressed at having, I was getting panic attacks, although I didn't know it was that at the time. And I just knew something was very, very off. Now, the, there was an incident that happened to me in the guards that really is not publicly known so I won't talk about that but it was actually the way I believe and think now things happen for us in life and so I knew I was unhappy I knew I needed change but nobody was leaving the guards it was a 30-year contract you did it until you know you, you retired it and so here I am having thoughts about this is not working out for me what will I do 
and you've another 30 years of it you know exactly. it's not only it's not working out but you're going to have to handle another 30 years and I didn't want to disappoint my parents either because they were over the moon. I'm the eldest of the family and they were so proud, you know, that I followed my grandfather's footsteps and he was one of the first guards in 1922 when we had our independence. Wow. And there was an awful lot of nostalgia, we'll say, attached to the career. And I, I, I was really feeling for them more than anything else. But at the end of the day, what I was going through wasn't good. So the meditation, just it was a silent meditation, breathing and just focus on your breath and, you know, and she maybe guided a little bit and... I just thought, wow, you know, I, I, I something sh shifted. And I thought, I started to really, really believe that I could make this change and make it work. And so there were several interviews, of course, back and forth to London and group interviews and all sorts of things. But I actually sailed through the whole process and was offered the job. And in fact, the first time I was offered British Airways, um, they had to um, with, withdraw it because the Gulf War broke out. And so it was a year before I actually got going, but I did get going and I took a career break. And, um, you know, I knew in my heart that I wasn't going to come back, but I did it to placate my parents. And so off I went to London and, and I, I've just been on this magical journey ever since, you know, just learning and growing. I mean, I just think that's what we're here to do. I mean, it's, it's a choice to personally develop, but I've been on it forever, I suppose, and will be. And then what about, um, because you mentioned you didn't want to disappoint your parents, and I think that is such a big thing. You know, another time, um, me and my family, we re relocated to Spain, and I was so excited, and we were going to set up an Irish bar, and, you know, it, it was yeah. just going to be amazing, and, you know, my child was going to grow up in Spain, a different lifestyle. But I was so worried about telling everybody around me I wasn't worried one second about how we were going to pull a pint even though we never worked in a bar or how we were going to finance you know none of that was my worries it was how am I going to tell people around and um, and I pushed through that because I really really wanted it and I didn't want to look back you know when I was 80 or 90 and go I wish I'd done that but I didn't because I might have disappointed someone or someone else might have been sad that I left but there are people that do have a dream to do it and they don't do it because they are really concerned about, you know, well, maybe what their parents will say or um, will they be judged? Will they be laughed at? You know, yeah, well, there is one, one, one of our biggest fears actually is fear of criticism, fear of being judged. Yeah. And probably, like, well, certainly when I have a client, you know, for hypnotherapy, we regress. And so inevitably it, it's going to go back to childhood very often in the home or most likely from school where we were judged or ridiculed or you know we might have forgotten the words of a poem or we got the sum wrong or we couldn't spell our name right and you know it was highlighted and we felt embarrassed and then the problem is we give meaning to things that happen around us and it creates a blueprint for how we live our life afterwards and the thing about it is we first make our beliefs about ourselves, but then the beliefs make us because we everything is energy so okay. everything is energy and everything is operating at different speeds of vibration. So our thoughts are energy. And so what we do with those thoughts, basically, how we internalize them, we, it's causing how we feel. And so how we feel will indicate how we act. And then the results are a reflection of that. Actions. Yeah. It's a reflection of that. So if I believe that I'm not good enough, or if I believe that I'm different to everybody else, well, I'm going to carry that with me in my life and it's going to hold me back. I'm going to feel like an imposter when I put myself out there. I'm going to always need to think that I need to be perfect, which means I never get it done. I'll procrastinate and I'll have my excuses. And I always say to people, you can have your excuses or your dreams, but you cannot have both. You can't have both. I love that. Yeah, excuses or dreams, but not both. And um, it's just until a person makes a decision. So, of course, I everything I do, Sharon, is about reprogramming your mind and getting rid of what we call the virus codes. It's like we update our software, our phones, our tab tablets, our laptops, desktops, you name it. We'll update the software in our electronic devices, but the majority of people don't actually update their own thinking and it's running their whole life or ruining their life, you know? And it is, and it's from, like you said, things that happened to us maybe 30, 40, 50 years ago mm -hmm. when we were children. Yes. Um, and how would, like, so I suppose, let's say somebody really decides, okay, I want to do this. You know, they might be in the corporate world now. And I think there's, there is certainly a lot of people now, especially since COVID, are looking around and going, you know what, you know, it's been a tough kind of year. You know, we're questioning, you know, is there more? You know, this thing we do go to college and, you know, you get the corporate job and 
everything is promotion, promotion, promotion. And then you get to where you're meant to be and you go, oh, <laughs> it really wasn't all that. And I think people are asking questions. Yeah, I think people are questioning it now. So let's say for someone out there that's listening and has that dream and decides, you know, I want to open anything. Let's say it's a clothes shop or, you know, whatever it is they want to actually open. If they make that decision, Pauline, and they came to you, what's the kind of next step for them? Because, you know, this is a big change for them to do. And they, you know, like you said, they just might not believe that it's possible because it's so far from the reality that they just probably yeah, cannot like see this. The person. desire is enough. The desire is actually enough. And it has to be a burning desire. It's not wishy-washy. You have to absolutely want whatever it is you want, whether it's a relationship, whether it's to have a baby, whether it's to emigrate, you have to have a burning desire. That's what I had when I, when I, when I chose to leave the guards. It's what I had when I was told I couldn't have children and have my son at age 51. And you know, that's another story all of its own. But, you know, you have to have a burning desire for what it is you want. The strategy side of things is only equating to 5% of your success in doing that. It's your mindset. You have to set your mind for the success. Now, there are steps to that. I mean, there's books written about it. There's courses. I mean, I facilitate the course in thinking and results. Yeah. It's all about that. It's the formula for success. There's no guessing. You don't need to guess. It's there for you. It's a done for you model insofar as follow these steps and apply it to your life and start breaking down your limitations. If you don't change your thinking, this the cause of the results that you currently have, then you're only going to get more of the same. So that's what Einstein said. I mean, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting a different result. You are only going to get the same result unless you change the programming, which is your thinking. And it's yeah. incredible to think that because we would think, um, and maybe it's the account side of me, but naturally you would think, okay, I want to do X, Y, Z. And you spend the whole time the strategy. Here's how I'm going to finance. You know, you will sit well, there and work it out. Logical brain. And we need it. We need left brain people, but we've all got the capacity to develop our left side of our brain and the right side of the brain. So they, they tend to say creative people are more right sided. Um, of, of the brain I would definitely have a dominant right side and less left but I do have left because I'm able to do certain things like that so it is a bit of a shift and a lot of people tend to look at the logic but it's not logical to do that well yeah of course it's not logical because you're programmed to have this particular result so you have to do something that's illogical that might have been brain handle that can our brains take can our brains take that oh my god you know, the brain likes novel things. It wants new ideas because same old, same old. I mean, you know, we, we have the capacity to change. Not only have we the capacity to change in our behavior and the results that we're getting, but we're actually also changing our physical brain structure because we know because of neuroplasticity that we can change the brain. The brain is, is malleable. It absolutely can change in its physical structure. And so, because every thought, you know, that's why they're able to do MRIs and all sorts of these um, scans on the brain. They're able to see how meditation affects you. They're able to see um, how stress affects you, where in the brain it is. They're able to see where your happiness is in your brain, where your depression is in your brain. So the brain is part of the body, but the mind is not the brain. And a lot of people think mind, they think brain, but the mind is not the brain or the brain is not the mind any more than your big toe is your mind. Okay. The mind doesn't exist. It is invisible. You cannot see it on an x-ray machine. You cannot see it on an MRI scan. It doesn't exist. It's consciousness. And it's about awareness. And it's connection to the universe and infinite intelligence. Like, this is big stuff. But this, yeah. is, this is available to all of us. And this is how it works. See, the laws of the universe are always working. We're always manifesting. But we're often getting what we don't want. So it has, you have to get so fed up of not getting what you actually want. You have to figure out, well, I want that, but it's not happening. Well, it's not happening because you're not programmed to get it. You're programmed to say, I want it, and then add all the bots. But I haven't got the money. I don't have the experience. I don't That's live the problem. Place. That's exactly the it's problem. The That's what happens. Sharing. I want it. And the programming bots. is the programming. We need to go back to being children when we decided, I want to be an astronaut. And there was no bots. It was just... Yeah, that's that's what I'll do. And then it gets out of us because we're told stop daydreaming and pay attention, and that means we stop using our imagination. And okay. our imagination is the workshop of the mind, so that's where all ideas come in. Everything, the iPhone, whatever the heck you have around you, there was an idea in somebody's mind, but they chose to run with it. Most ideas actually don't see the light of day. 
And that's the other thing as well is, and Anya's just joined us as well, and she's saying, yeah, that's so true. Um, you know, that's the other thing as well is we sometimes think, well, that's grand. You know, Pauline, you're great and you can go and do that. But I'm just not like you. I can't do that. And I think there is a lot of that um, that we will look at other people and think they have something more special than us. Um, they have better resources, whatever it is. But you're going to tell well, I, want to speak, I want to speak to that because first and foremost, yeah. and I've been that person myself. I mean, even in the industry that I'm in now and coaching and um, what I do, you naturally look to other people as to how they're doing it. But I look more from, um, well, always from admiration, but also just it, it would be encouraged to maybe see some of the traits that you see in somebody that you admire that's doing things, but never to compare yourself to the degree that you're in competition. Yeah. And that you're, you see, when, you, when we compare ourselves to somebody else, well, we're not in our own lane for a start. And it means we're not creating. And when we're comparing or in a competitive state of mind with somebody else, we're not creating. So what people need to understand is if there was 100 teachers in a room all trained in the same subject and, and they were going to go out into the same school, we'll say, they will all do it differently. The only reason they'll do it differently is so they've got the same skills insofar as the material that they're going to deliver. But what will make it different is their own life experience, their personality their levels of awareness, their uniqueness that comes to it. So people need to stop fearing that they're not going to be as good as somebody else. The best you you can be is the real you. And I always tell the story, but, and it's from Oprah. And Oprah, when she started, you know, new, doing the news and being an anchor woman on whatever channel it was she started out, and she always said, I need to model myself on Barbara Walters, who was the very glam yeah. Um, American lady that was familiar to so many on, on the news and she was an anchor woman for years and, and, and Oprah was thinking, she was trying to be Barbara and then she got this light bulb moment, I can't be Barbara I can only be Oprah and so the moment she actually dropped that and started to be herself, well the rest is history because I mean she just did Oprah and so I would say to clients and I say to myself, just be yourself not everybody's going to like us we have to get over ourselves, that's just the way it is um, and that's okay. That's that's okay. Because okay. Yeah. It's, never heard, about, it's not about heard, it. you know, it isn't. And, and and I suppose we have to think too, who do we maybe not um connect with or resonate with, you know, but it's it's not about the other person either. It's about yeah. maybe something that we're seeing in ourselves. And often people are reflecting back to us maybe an inadequacy that we ourselves can deal with. We can we can create ourselves, and in fact. That's what visualization is all about. I mean, I actually do help people with this, Sharon, because uh, the people that I work with will have big dreams. And so they have to visualize themselves having it already. It's an act as if mentality. And that's a mindset. That is a mindset. A lot of people say, oh, God, I feel fake. It does feel fake and it does feel phony at the beginning, but then it actually becomes who you are. Yeah, and I think that's one thing that I read as well before is that, your self-image you know your I suppose your actions will always try play in line with your self-image I'm sure you can say this better than me but if you can actually believe that you are that person then you will act accordingly and not yeah. feel like that fraudster correct and in actual fact you can never outperform your self-image that's so, what I was trying to say I'm glad yeah. you said it you said it much yeah. better than me you can't yeah. outperform your self-image and I'm not talking about the outer persona that people say oh my god she's really you know confident um but inside you're actually crumbling and you feel like a phony mm -hmm. it's so important that your inner image matches the outer image yeah yeah no I, I hear you for definite um and then just the women that you know I, I know you kind of take women through this when they have now build that self-belief and they have the desire and you can see that they're not on the other side because obviously it's a journey but you can see that they are have started to follow their dreams they've taken the steps you know they're building whatever their dreams are what is it like for them now what's their what's their life like for them now can you well, see such a shift in their happiness yeah well I mean to hear people saying I'm living I'm living the dream and you know having given up um a corporate job in favor of their passion purpose that is earning more than they were with the two combined at one point to see mm. another lady go out and again leave corporate and follow her passion and to start employing people and to hire a warehouse to bring her product out to many 
it's just so rewarding. But just to see people that were a little bit shy and coy at the beginning to start opening up, showing their personality, coming out, because I suppose, I mean, I'm creating a space for that. I mean, that's what I'm encouraging. I want people to come out of hiding. I mean, because I would have hidden too. I mean, it might have mm -hmm. appear that way to a lot of people, but I, 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 I invest a lot of money in myself over the years going, observing, you know, how the big coaches were doing it. Like Lisa Nichols, Marcy Shymoff, Deep, well, Deepak is more than a coach, but I did train with him in yoga and meditation. Obviously, Bob Proctor, Tony Robbins. Like I've gone to an awful lot of the big guys because simply to, as a sideline person, like you'd be watching the game, watching it and thinking, how can I weave myself into this? And how can mm -hmm. I, do you know what I'm saying? So I always say to people, we, we, we all have PhDs. And we have a PhD in ourselves because there's nobody can do you, Sharon, and there's nobody can do me. And that's why we're not in competition. And people will gravitate to me and people will gravitate to you. And people yeah. will come, come near me. And I, I, I'm, I'm so okay with that. But that's because I have developed my confidence to be okay with that. Like, I actually can refuse clients. Isn't that yeah. amazing? Yeah, and but that's good. That is good. I because say I only want to work with people that are actually driven and people that are hungry for to, to be the best version of themselves. Like I, I, I don't want to spoon feed people and I don't want to babysit because what I teach is it's a program for leaders, people to lead their own lives, people to lead in business, people to make a difference in the world. The big vision. That's what we're doing. We're, we're really creating a movement. But it's ordinary people doing this as well. It's not you know, for anybody listening. It's not. Yes. Thank you, Sharon. God Almighty, ordinary doing the extraordinary. People yeah, come yeah. from all sorts of backgrounds. People That's in it, jobs, it is. People in jobs that want out, they know they're meant for more. And I mean, I would use language like divine assignment. I truly believe that we're all put on this earth to honor and fulfill our own divine assignment. I mean, we're spiritual beings living in a physical body and we have an intellect. We operate in three planes of understanding and we have to understand that we are magnificent by virtue of the fact that we exist at all. Yeah, I love that. No, I do. I love that. And then for anybody, Pauline, that's watching or listening um, afterwards and wants to find out about how can they work with you, where is the best place for them to learn a little bit more about what you do? Well, the website, obviously, it's Pauline Rodish. My surname is a bit tricky for people, the spelling of it. We might put that in the comments as well. And um, then after the replay, PaulineRodish.com. And um, the website and then there's contact details um, or if you're already friends with me on Facebook, you can message me in Messenger. Uh, my God, I'm extremely approachable and available. I mean, you know what I mean? I do my best to help people. I'm here to help people through the self-doubt because I, I, that's my passion is to help people realize their worth. And so many people, I mean, I've spoken to people in the last number of days. I don't have the money. I don't have the resources. They can't invest in themselves. And like, I'm not saying that that's not maybe a problem that's there and then in the bank, you know? Yeah. But what we teach and what I teach with absolute conviction from personal experience of it, when you don't need money for anything until you've made a decision that you want it. Okay. And, and, and if I can just get you to understand that. So when we could go on holidays, and I hope you're all planning your holidays because I can't wait to get out because I love planes and airports and all sorts of things. And I couldn't care less if I'm 15 hours on a plane. I just love it. Probably why I worked for 15 years at British Airways. But um, the thing is, just think about when you wanted to go on a holiday and you wanted to maybe up the ante and go somewhere, maybe like the Caribbean rather than Butlins or Spain or whatever, or Portugal. And you want to go further afield and you think, oh my God, that's so expensive. I haven't got the money for that, but you really want to go. Here's the desire again. Yeah. I have okay. a burning desire to sit and drink, you know, my pina colada or whatever it is. And you just say, well, I'm going to get the deposit. And you put the deposit down. And you have no clue how you're going to get that money. You absolutely have no evidence of that money in your bank. But guess what? You're on the sandy beaches in the Bahamas or wherever it is, Bermuda, Barbados. Um, you, doesn't that happen all the time? Yeah. Yeah. Right now, I Do agree. And the same with even buying a house that was I house. my thing there a couple of years ago yeah. was the house and yeah and you think where am I going to get the money mm. so you know and the only reason I'm talking about money is that it's a mass it's a massive problem for a lot of people because like I had to tell a lady this morning she said I just don't have the money and um, she wants to, to 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 work with me but she said I just don't have the money and so I said well you're actually affirming that you don't have the money which means the money is not coming to you. you're repelling it 
people don't understand that they're, they're, what they're saying and what they're thinking are actually causing a particular vibration. So if, if what we want is up here, oh my God, I really want to go on that holiday. I want to buy that house on the hill, but I'm over here and I have no money. And I'm basically yes. thinking, oh my God, how am I going to do that? And you keep nullifying it and nullifying it. So this is on a high vibration, but you're on a lower vibration. And so in order to match that, you have to believe, you've got to speak it up and act as if you are that person with that income coming in from multiple sources. Because you've, and I mean, I, I do prosperity challenges. I think you probably know that as well in my own. I t- and that's what I was going to say as well, is your Facebook group is great for this because it is a lot for people to take in you know we weren't taught this way in school we weren't taught this way by our parents and it's pretty much Pauline the opposite I think you know I suppose I've started to learn about this maybe the last two years I would say I don't know how I came across it one night and I I really just fell up fell across it one night um but it's been you know a big thing for me to try go you know really um but I think it is because we need to unlearn what we've already learned and I think your master classes are brilliant for that because like you said you've done the prosperity challenges and um, but you've also do the master class where you can actually explain it and show the proof and show here's how to bring it in your life you know here's how you can actually make this happen in your own life and I think it's when you start seeing you taking the challenge and doing it and then what actually happens in your life you start to believe that bit more but just to believe it initially it is a difficult thing for people to take yeah, on board. Well, I mean what you're actually doing as I've said is reprogramming yeah the effort the effort is in what you're mastering your thoughts the effort becomes oh my god did i just say that you know did i say i haven't got the money did i say i'm not qualified enough did i actually say i'm not good enough because what you're out it's a self-fulfilling prophecy i mean if that's what you say that's what you get if i mean it's henry ford has said if you think you can you can if you think you can't you can't because you're making it so i mean we're we have to understand that we're always manifesting. It's not like you say, okay, I'm going to go to a manifestation workshop and I'm going to change my life. You're actually manifesting every second that you're awake and asleep. Yeah, and it's a scary thing to think of in the sense that we just don't know that. You know, it's different when you hear this and um, you see it in your life and then you can, you know, manifest differently. Or even, you know, if people don't like the word manifest, you can think differently, you can behave differently. Yeah, design, lots of different yeah. words. To, to, to make a, a, a different experience in your life and to get different results. Yeah, yeah. No, that's it. Pauline, I could have you for a whole series on this yeah. podcast. You've so many things. I can't to... believe the time has gone so fast and I apologise about it. I hope it didn't oh, go back. No, it's been absolutely brilliant. Um, but one thing from my side I always ask our guests is to leave one bit of parting advice. Now, you have so much advice, but if there was one bit of parting advice, even for somebody that has a dream, to go, you know what, what is my next step? You know, if you take one step forward, you're that little bit closer to it. And what is the next step that you think would be great? Well, what I would say is the the next step would be to write it down. Actually write it down. Because the the minute we take a pen in our hand and a piece of paper and we write down, I am so happy and grateful now that I am or I have, and you write it in the present tense, and I would be suggesting you write it a hundred times, you are actually, what happens is the mind thinks in pictures. So the minute you put the pen in your hand and write, you start to create the pictures in your mind. And so this is the the imagination now. And I said earlier that the imagination is the workshop of the mind. So now we're, we're beginning to really entertain this idea, but where it needs to go is you need to plant it in your subconscious mind. This is the part of the mind that is connected to infinite intelligence. And this is where we're working with spirit. And this yeah. is where it gets woo-woo for some people, but this is actually how it works. We're always working with the laws of the universe. So write, you said, okay, I have a dream, write it down. Read it every day, say it out loud, dance up and down, make a chant out of it. Say it three times into your right eye looking in the mirror. Say it three times into your left eye looking in the mirror and absolutely start to act as if you already have it. And everybody that's listening can take that first step. You know, that is absolutely a step everybody can do. I tell you what, I'm sitting here and I showed this on the masterclass last week. This is my copy book from when I was in first year in secondary school. And it was a project that we had to do on Jesus's life and my own life. And I actually wrote down here, when I grow up, I want to be a Bangarda, an air hostess and a stewardess on a ship. 
And I've done two out of the three. Now, little did I know that I was actually manifesting, designing my own life, creating my own life. And it's thanks to my father that I have. And there was all the pictures of, 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 of those of us that were living at the time. I can see. Wow. Yeah, I can see. Wow. And, and of course, I often look and I always say, look at it. Look at a photograph of yourself when you were small. Um, not necessarily even the baby, but even even as the baby. And just think, you know, why were you born? You know, what, what is it you're here to do? I still ask that, and I'm nearly 57 years of age. I mean, I still ask myself that question every single day. Yeah. And it just reinforces, reinforces our purpose. And it just guides us because it's coming from inside. It's not outside. And yeah. once you're led from the inside, you know, it's a very different. Then your confidence begins to soar because you realize, oh, okay, this is really who I am. This is what I'm meant to do. And then the, 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 the path unfolds. And you stay in action. We don't actually, we're not passively living you know we're, we're, we're in action but we're checking in on how we feel all the time because your feelings and the vibration that you're in is huge in terms of creating the life that you want amazing Pauline you've been absolutely amazing I'm so going to have you back again because you've so much things but I'm going to put your website in and um, the comments later on I'll have it as well if somebody's listened to this in audio I'll have it in the podcast notes as well that people can find you um and definitely if someone wants to even just take those first steps or even just understand a little bit extra and um, your master classes i think are brilliant if they well welcome you know if you're a woman on a mission you're very welcome in the group called phenomenal women on a mission because yeah there's a great energy between the women that are interacting in there um amazing and, and if i can just finish with this sharon sorry but i really you. appreciate your time and, and love speaking to you but i just want everyone to know that we're living in times right now where those who are answering their calling um, we're here to make a difference guys we, we we chose to be here i firmly believe that we chose to we signed up to be on the earth at this time covid and all the rest that went with it i really believe that i really do and i believe that you know people need what you have so hiding behind the curtains or under the duvet is not going to help anybody so you have to start owning your divine assignment and you've got to show up for yourself and for other people because somebody needs what you've got it's as simple as that it really is yeah you're doing the world a favor works every way completely and then we're living a life of fulfillment and meaning i love that i think that's a lovely way to actually end is that that's how we live our life of fulfillment and meaning leave it on the pos positive side. Pauline, you've been brilliant. Um, Thank you so much, Sharon. I'm definitely going to have you back on. And you'll then if anybody's in, You'll be on my say show. again? I'll you'll be on your show, yeah. <laughs> and then if anybody has any questions, if anyone's watching the replay later on, um, just pop them in and then myself and Pauline, we'll answer them back as well later on. Brilliant. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Pauline. Sharon, take care. God bless. <laughs>